uh, first off, uh, let me just thank um, uh, all of you for being here and uh, my colleague, Assemblymember Member Bloom, for uh, joining us. Uh, in 2010, I authored SB 535, which created the green and white sticker program that was supposed to last until 2015. This green sticker law has allowed the plug-in hybrid uh, to be part of the latest generations of low emission vehicles to access the HOV lanes. It's been a tremendous success and the furtherance of the technology here in California, but most importantly, helping our environment. Uh, SB 286 is intended to incentivize further uh, individuals to purchase uh, these uh, plug-in uh, hybrid um, and it will then help enhance uh, even more uh, compliance with uh, AB uh, 32. Uh, only 30,000 uh, eligible vehicles are currently eligible for this incentive out of 30 million vehicles. Uh, SB 286 would then extend uh, this uh, particular program until 2019. That will then, as I indicated further, further incentivize individuals to uh, purchase these particular cars, get into HOV lanes with these green stickers. Uh, I just want to uh, thank uh, my colleague, um, Assemblymember Member Bloom, uh, for his assistance on uh, that uh, particular effort. And then I'm going to have him uh, talk about his bill and what it does. And with that, Assemblymember Member Bloom. Thank you. thank you, Senator Yee. Well, can't think of a better place to be talking about these bills than on a more beautiful day. It's just a spectacular Sacramento morning. But every day we have the opportunity to do things that help our environment. And that's what these bills are all about. Uh, today, uh, uh, members of the legislature have the opportunity to encourage Californians to make choices that are better for our California environment, for really for our world's environment. We call on our colleagues to respond with a resounding aye or yes this afternoon when voting on our legislative package that strengthens a vital incentive for consumers to buy clean and zero emission vehicles. Together, Senator Yee's bill and mine extend the Clean Air Vehicle Sticker Program for another five years. Well, that's important because if you think if you're buying a vehicle today, you want to know that that sticker program is going to be available for you and car dealers can use that when they're talking to people who are coming into the showroom and looking at beautiful vehicles like this to say, hey, you know, you're going to be able to have that sticker for the next five years because of what the California legislature did back in September, what is it, September 3rd of, uh, of, of 2013. You'll be able to put the sticker on the car and then use the carpool lane. That's a fast pass for going green, a fast pass through the lanes that are that are less traveled. And imagine being able to shave, say, half of the time off of, uh, off of your morning commute. That might not mean so much here in Sacramento, but let me tell you where I'm from down in Southern California, we have traffic congestion every day, every day. And it's true throughout California, congestion is really adding to greenhouse gases and clogging up our roadways. So having this program and this incentive is going to help both move traffic, move these vehicles more quickly through our roadways, but it's also going to help clean up the environment. What an invaluable gift that we can bring the state of California. I come from Santa Monica, where we also incentivize the use of vehicles like this. By If you've got that sticker on there, you don't have to pay for parking. And if you've ever been to Santa Monica, you know what a premium that is in my neighborhood. So it's uh, another way of helping LA, the LA area confront uh, its uh, environmental challenge, really our biggest environmental challenge, clean air. Uh, to get it, nothing is more basic than greening the cars that we have. And of course, the same is true for throughout California. Transportation is the biggest, the single biggest source of greenhouse gases um, and, and, is, and of smog. So right now, California is working to have zero emission and clean uh, cars account for 15% of new vehicles sold by 2025. And if we can achieve this goal, huge air quality gains uh, await, huge reductions in carbon. But unfortunately, right now, we're pretty far from that goal. Uh, and so 
we're, we're really in need of the sticker program to help incentivize, to help energize the public in, in support of buying these vehicles. Of the 28 million vehicles on California Road right now, only about 40,000 are using clean or zero emission standard stickers. And with car sales now on a meteoric rebound in sales, the, the prediction for sales this year of cars is that it's going to outdo any of the last several years. Now is the perfect time for us to be strengthening our programs for buying greener cars. So thank you all for being here, and uh, I'm sure we'll be happy to take some questions in a few minutes. Senator? Uh, let me uh, have uh, t uh, Tim Michaels, uh, Carmichael, who's president of the California Natural uh, Gas Vehicle Coalition. Tim. Good morning. I'm Tim Carmichael. I'm the president of the California Natural Gas Vehicle Coalition. We represent uh, 25 companies that are working together to expand the use of natural gas as a transportation fuel here in California. We care about this program very much because natural gas is one of the clean fuels that's eligible for the white stickers and the HOV lane access. Uh, not to disagree with Mr. Bloom, but even here in California, we have tra uh, here in Sacramento, we have traffic, and uh, the HOV lane access is a valuable incentive. Our organization, along with many others, believe this incentive, the HOV lane access, is the most valuable non-monetary incentive that we offer for clean vehicles in our state. We are doing a lot relative to the rest of the country and the rest of the world, but every little incentive helps us get more of these vehicles on the road, it gets us off the petroleum dependency, and helps clean our air. I just want to thank uh, Senator Yi and Assemblymember Bloom for their leadership on this issue. This is a very important program, and we really appreciate their efforts to extend it. Thank you very much. And then last speaker is uh, Richard uh, Lowenthal. Um, you know, all of us uh, kind of wonder, you know, when you purchase these particular cars, you know, how do you plug it in? How do you get the juice? And uh, Richard uh, is a founder uh, of uh, ChargePoint, and he's going to talk a little bit about that. So I want to thank the, uh, the Senator and Assembly member for, for their leadership. You know, no, no matter how good an issue sound, there is somebody against it. Uh, and it, it takes uh, courageous leadership to move things forward. We, we really appreciate it, especially in a bicameral way, uh, leading California the way it should be led. You know, I, I have an advantage over, I think, maybe all of you, in that I'm old enough to remember uh, and have worked in Los Angeles in the 70s when you could not see blue when you looked up. Uh, California solved that problem. California made it so it's a pleasure to go to the Huntington Library again, where before it was a hazard. Uh, and, and they do it through, through uh, leadership like this. The way this works, uh, it doesn't make it so that the state has to raise a bunch of taxpayer money and spend it to get clean air. The, the, uh, the really innovative idea in this kind of legislation is it uses pro, uh, private capital. Our company, ChargePoint, uh, is headquartered in California. We manufacture in California. We ship to 14 countries. We have uh, 13,000 charging stations for these electric vehicles we've deployed. We're proud to be part of the answer. But what we need more, more than anything is to encourage other people to be part of the answer, to encourage uh, private industry and private citizens to be part of the, uh, the answer for clean air. And that's what this bill does. Where this has effect is on the showroom floor. It's when you're thinking about buying a car. This is the reason you buy electric or you buy natural gas, because there's an incentive there. It makes a difference in your daily life, and that overcomes what is generally a disincentive, which is the higher cost of these cars at this point. And it works. It's the one, number one or number two reason people buy these vehicles in California is to get this access. So it makes a tremendous difference. It uses consumer power and business money to, uh, to keep our air in California clean and keep us leading the nation in what you can do to have an impact, like we had an impact on the air that was unbreathable in the 70s. So thank you very much for your leadership. It makes a big difference. Thank you. All right, I think that, that concludes uh, comments. I'm sure that uh, Assemblymember Bloom and I would uh, be more than happy to take any questions that anybody may have. Um, I, you know, I don't have, I don't know if any of you guys have, but one, one of the um, uh, reasons why we have this particular bill to extend the program 
is to create a greater incentive uh, for these uh, particular programs. And, and what we hear from the industry is that, that that's a tremendous uh, boon uh, to furthering uh, the sale of these particular vehicles. Well, I, th I, th I think the argument that would be made by the, uh, the person selling the car is we can guarantee you this for five years. It's likely to be reauthorized, but at least for that five-year window, you're going to have this incentive available to you. And it would be my expectation that this incentive will be continued on into the future, but based on the technology that exists then. So at one time, we were allowing uh, uh, this incentive for hybrid vehicles. That's no longer the case because that's not the current best technology this is for, for reducing greenhouse gases. Hybrids are great. Hybrid sales have taken off. They're, uh, they're doing just fine without the incentive. Can you talk a little bit about um, why it has to be renewed every three years? You know, is it for that reason, that the change in technology, that it can't just be made a permanent I think that is the primary reason because we want to make sure in the bills that we're crafting here that we're keeping up with technology and technology has been changing dramatically. Yeah, I, I think if you remember the very first sticker, it was the yellow sticker and it was extremely popular. Uh, it was a tremendous boon to the uh, auto industry uh, because it kept jobs. It, it, it uh, uh, maintained an industry here in the state of California at the same time. Uh, we were able to clean up our environment. So uh, I think if you take that lesson of the very first sticker, you will learn why we're doing what we're doing. And that is that we want to continue to incentivize uh, the industry to look at better ways and uh, uh, cleaner ways of uh, transporting individuals from one point to the other. But at the same time, uh, keeping our jobs and, and keeping the industry robust here in the state of California. Well, you know, there, there's, there's clearly was a concern about the uh, degradation uh, of the carpool lanes, and within our bills, uh, we do in fact leave uh, some wiggle room with the Department of Transportation to kind of let them look at how do we moderate uh, the use of these particular uh, stickers, how many of these stickers to be released, so that we do not, in fact, as you indicate. Uh, uh, do some serious damage to the HOV lanes, and that would then be in compliance with the federal regulations. And I don't think this is a current problem, uh, uh, but there are there are 28 million vehicles on the road in California. Mm -hmm. Only 40,000 meet this st the standard for the the uh, green and the and the white stickers combined. So we're not adding uh, significant capacity uh, or impact on the capacity of the uh, HOV lanes.